The following video is rated I for informative. All right, welcome to Geeks and Gains. My name is Paul Boudreau, and I am doing a video review of another private session that I had with my good friend and training partner, Michael. We are, um, this is a shorter video. I got a, a bunch of videos, so I'm not just putting them together. So I'm just doing these one at a time. Um, Michael and I have been working really on his guard retention and his his defense and his ability to not get submitted. So um, that's kind of our, our focus whenever we're sparring. And uh, I like to make this video so he can be aware of uh, what's going on and, and how we've been doing. So we start standing up again, as always. I encourage you to stand up as much as possible. It's very important, especially if you want to use jiu-jitsu for self-defense, to start standing up. So we start basic grip fighting, and um, we stay at a distance, and I always try to protect, protect my lapel. That's why my hands raise. I always try to protect my lapel as he's going to be reaching in. So I shoot in here for a pretty sloppy single leg, but I hook the leg, and so I get the takedown. We go off camera here for a second, but... We're going to readjust and move back to the center where the where the camera is so we can uh, properly get our uh, review as we do it. So we start, we ended in kind of a, a cradle position here. And uh, so I, you notice I immediately go for a grip on the sleeve. So that ties him up as I move into north-south position. So I hold here, keeping my head low because uh, Michael, is, again, he's in his 50s. So his, his flexibility is not super great. But a lot of people who are flexible can bring their legs up and, and start uh, escaping there. So here I move into side control and I hold. Again, if you do sport jiu-jitsu, you always want to hold your position because you're going to have three seconds before you're going to get points. And I'm really working on pinning his hips here and blocking both sides of the hips. So here I go for, uh, try to step over. Uh, I like to attack the arm when I step over, maybe an arm bar or... Um, maybe start setting up for Kimura attacks. This is a really good position to set up for, for Kimura. And and the risk, the great thing about Kimura, the, especially any solid Kimura trap system, is that it's going to start working to help expose the back. So if you can threaten the Kimura as they defend, oftentimes people are going to be uh, uh, opening up their back for the. Uh, for the defense so boom right here I take the back uh, start working to get my hooks in he does an awesome job look what he's doing right here he has knee to elbow connection you should be focusing on doing this every day uh, prevents me from getting my hook in and, and is really protecting himself um, so here I again trying to go back right back to it um, so I pull him over notice on his cross side his elbow and knee aren't together so yeah he brings it in in order, yes, yes, we're focusing on keeping the elbows tight. So I flatten him out and pull him back a little bit so he does a really good job turning into me, which is uh, what you want to do. You want to turn into the choke and, and follow the pressure. That way you can kind of spin out. And so here I'm, I'm body surfing, and, and I talk about this a lot in class, is you want to develop the skill. Uh, kinesthesiology is what, what some people refer to it as. It's a whole study of body mechanics and balance. And so here you, you need to uh, really learn to surf, body surf. Ooh, and so I start going for, I call this the row and arrow. So you see both of my shins, it's not a traditional bow and arrow. Uh, both of my shins are on the back of his neck. And so I pull like I'm doing a, a upright row. And uh, here are my spirit fingers. Um, the only thing about this one is, is it does. You have to have really strong grips as it can, it can uh, tire out your grips. But it's really brutal. It's really, really um, getting both of those shins behind the head and neck. So I got that collar grip. And I immediately put my shins out. <clears throat> because you, traditionally in the bow and arrow... You want to lock your feet together. You want to finish with your feet locked together when you get that. But oftentimes when people are flat like that, it's very hard to get your feet underneath or to get um, a really effective bow and arrow. So that's a really good modification. So slap bump and away we go. Uh, here I start working spider guard grips. He pins my leg, which is really good. But I go right here into like a reverse deli heva work. Uh, so you see that I hook. Oh, but I grab my own foot. So... This is me going into 
Uh, some people call it Mantis Guard, but it's like a reverse Delahiva modification with Mantis Guard. And so I'm grabbing my own leg. He does a really good job backstepping here. That's really smart. Uh, I start trying to work my foot inside, and I'm grabbing the lapel. Big fan. I've been playing a lot of lapel guard. Uh, looking forward to competing this week. I'm going to be playing uh, almost exclusively lapel. Um, so, you know, if my competition's out there watching, look out. I'm going to be coming for you. Um, but here, I so I have cross side lapel and I'm grabbing at the hip, which is good because it helps isolate his hips, right? So as I come in and go into um, a wrestling position in order to get him down, I keep that lapel. I always, uh, I've been uh, preaching all month that the lapel is your lifeline, right? If I can use it to pin his hips or pin his shoulders, it's an effective. It's like having an underhook, but uh, it's a bit more dynamic. Um, and so here, you notice that I'm trying to feed it around, but I keep that lapel. Look, I never lose that lapel as, I, as I'm as i going for, and he, he's doing a great job again, elbow to knee connection, trying to prevent the guard pass. Um, excellent job. But here I go into the gift wrap position while holding the lapel. So I'm able to pin him down and threaten with that lapel at the same time, which is really hard. This is really kind of uh, in the same vein. This is my gi tactic as far as the... Um, the Danaher dilemma scenario. And here I, I jump over and um, and jump to the back. And so here I try to roll through and go with this choke, um, but he is, I don't have enough, iner I can't overcome the inertia here. He, he weighs uh, a bit more than me, so I can't get the full rotation. But again, I'm, I'm coming here trying to go for this, uh, Keenan calls it the worm hat choke, but uh, it's really just a lapel um, around the front. And so I'm trying to get this this uh, lapel choke, uh, and he's doing a really good job uh, shutting me down, but he's in danger. You gotta know that you need to start unwinding this and getting out of this position. You cannot sit here. This is this is a very compromised position, so you wanna work really hard to uh, not allow this position again, because, um, I mean, it's just literally like having a noose around your neck, which is really, really dangerous. And uh, so here I start working for back attacks. I move to take the back. And um, I start going like I'm going to in the crucifix position, trying to go for a cross-eyed uh, arm bar. So I, 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 yep, here it is. I pull his arms and uh, go in for an arm bar or key lock. Uh, I'm able to isolate the arm and get the tap. So uh, you always want to um, be aggressive whenever you uh, are in these compromised positions and don't camp out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll have some more videos coming up soon. Stay certified.